Hi guys. Oh Jesus. Uh, <laughs> what a day. Good God. It is now an exciting Saturday night. Finally got my hand on a drink. Saturday night begins here in the end times in my little uh, seven by seven bivouac from the elements. So we say it is Saturday night, December 3rd, 2022. And uh, so anyway, I guess it was yesterday, you know, starting just another fucking day sitting, you know, lying around here on my comfortable mattress, uh, watching this damn screen, reading my doom and gloom on medium.com, and I'm in here for like a fucking hour, hour and a half yesterday, it's goddamn freezing and shit, and, and I just said, I, I, I'm fucking done with it, I got two choices, I can lie around here, in this on this comfortable mattress with the heater on uh you, you know my little dog beside me uh sitting here on youtube and netflix and medium.com and uh and whiling or pissing another day of my life down the toilet or i could quit my fucking whining uh, uh, about the goddamn weather and uh, <clears throat> how awful I have it being stuck up here in this fucking hellhole uh, called north of the Mason-Dixon line. And, and, and I got up, put on my fucking clothes, and I headed out I I into, the, I into the biting north wind. And, you know, guys, I got a lot accomplished yesterday. A lot of fucking, man, man I was out there with the weed whacker doing all of this stuff or you know cleaning up all around the ponds and stuff and uh good lord i was putting together uh working on this antique bed uh that i found at habitat for humanity a few weeks ago for ten dollars you know putting new slats and, and all of that you know getting this antique bed put together and then I went uh, and finished siting the new outhouse. Uh, had a full day, well, full day of work. It gets fucking dark at 4.30. But uh, if those are my two fucking choices to, to sit around uh, in, in, in my comfortable little prison uh, or, or getting out and doing some fucking work Went out and did some work. Get up today. It's fucking nasty and raining and, and, and all of this shit. And I'm thinking of my new outhouse up there getting wet with no roof on it. So what do I do today? I get out there. Is anyone uh, listening to this? Certainly anybody under the age of 50. Have you ever been by yourself out in the fucking woods on a freezing rainy day trying to put two ice cold wet slippery you know four by eight foot panels of metal roofing up on top of, uh, of an eight foot tall outhouse with a slope this big uh, getting up there on the fucking ladder fucking uh, you know about killing my goddamn self, trying to, to put the goddamn roof on this outhouse. And, but I did it, boys. Your old, your old boomer doomer, your old 63-year-old boomer uh, w w with the bad fucking back and the bad elbow was out there in the fucking cold and rain today putting the goddamn metal roof on his outhouse, improving his property and, and getting ready for the, you know, building an outhouse for the end times when I could have been here uh, lying in this goddamn uh, comfortable tiny house on this absolutely comfortable mattress. It's, it's one of these uh, memory foam mattresses that I got off Craigslist. But anyway, guys, you know, once I was up there working, 
I was thinking about uh, that little fucking pissant uh, Reagan parent and uh, just thinking and you know the more I thought about that video that I did guys so I I guess I was a little hard on uh, on the little pissant you know I, I admit uh, he just struck a nerve in me Okay, if it wasn't him, it would have been some other fucking little entitled, spoiled brat, little pissant sitting around in, in a fucking uh, in a fucking silk kimono, uh, trying to act like uh, you know that he belongs in a goddamn Dorothea Lang uh, depression photo about the tough fucking life he's had as he's pulling back his little blonde highlights and stuff. I anyway, so I'm starting thinking, you know, I was a little hard on the boy, uh, you know, us boomers, uh, you know how easy we are to trigger. So guys, uh, I have an apology to make to, uh, to this young man. Uh, I don't know how old uh, Reagan is, I guess he's in his 30s, so that would make him a millennial. He's a millennial. He's one of these, uh, he, he, you know, he's one of these little millennials who have been hooked up to their sugar tit, uh, connecting them to whatever boomer, uh, fucking mooching off and being 100% dependent on boomers. And, and uh, I anyway, guys, it's, it's not just Reagan, so I just want to extend my sincere apology to Reagan Parenton. That I understand he is a product of his, uh, of his time. And, and just to, I, I know you don't want to hear it, I just want to play just a few seconds of that video that got me, uh, got my, my boomer panties in such a wad uh, a couple of nights ago, cause I, I, I want you to hear what Reagan had to say. And, and the more I listen to it, I understand uh, he's right. He is right. So Reagan, one more time, this'll, this'll be about 10 seconds. So here is our, uh, you know, our, our overworked, uh, you know, victim of the big bad boomers. And he's going to, the uh, individual he is referring to, of course, if you don't know who he's talking about, he's talking about that mean old boomer, Hambone Little Tail. So take it away. He was talking about my video that I recorded here in the tiny house. Take it away, Reagan Parenton, you little pissant. Together. Hell, you can just put me in a room with a straight jacket and a Game Boy, and I bet you I could survive much longer than this individual. Okay. Guys, I admit it. I admit it. If if I was taking the Reagan Parenton little spoiled brat uh, millennial challenge, okay, you get two rooms, two tiny houses, two rooms with comfortable, comfortable mattresses in them. I am every bit as much of a fan of comfortable mattresses as, as, as that little pissant. Okay, I admit I'm 63 years old. I have a, a broken back. I have a herniated shoulder, uh, among other things. I'm sure that Reagan uh, has a broken back and a herniated shoulder too. But I, like Reagan, I enjoy a comfortable mattress. So put us in a room with a comfortable mattress and a Game Boy. Put us in two adjacent rooms and take in a boomer taking the millennial challenge, which one is going to survive longer lying on a comfortable mattress in their room with a Game Boy 
than the other one. Who, who, which one, the boomer or the millennial? Well, guys, it's a, <laughs> this is a no-brainer. I admit it. Reagan, you win. I guarantee you that Reagan Parenton could last a hell of a lot longer lying on a comfortable bed in a room with a Game Boy than Hambone Little Tailgate. And I, I have no doubt about this. My guess is Reagan Parenton, let's say if Reagan is 33 and I'm 63, that Reagan Parenton, and, I, and, 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 and again, I'm not just picking on him. Uh, my guess is that 98% of millennials, you put them in, in a, in a, on a fucking comfortable mattress in their room and put a Game Boy in their hand, particularly if it's a fucking rainy, nasty December day outside, and you put a boomer uh, in, in, in a room next to them with a Game Boy, 98% of the time, the, the fucking little whiny, spoiled brat, pissant uh, millennial is going to win that challenge. I, I, I have no doubt. I have no fucking idea what a Game Boy is. No idea. I, I have never seen a Game Boy. I have never held a Game Boy in my hand. I would have no fucking idea how to turn a Game Boy on. I would have no idea what to do with the Game Boy if I did uh, figure it out to turn it on. The simple reason why, because I don't give a fuck about Game Boys. I don't give a fuck about them. Never have, don't now, never will. I will never own a fucking Game Boy or any of this other fucking distraction shit. Now, I did go out and, you know, and get a goddamn smartphone a year ago. One year ago, I got one of these goddamn smartphones. I have not turned it on in three days. I have not turned on my smartphone in three days. Sure as fuck have never played a video game on a, on a, on a smartphone. Last time I played a fucking video game, I think I remember it was called Pac-Man in about 1978. Uh, I, I, you know, the big rage called Pac-Man. Uh, I played it for like 10 fucking minutes and, and, and said, what kind of clueless fucking moron? I was like 18 or whatever. Uh, it, it gives a fuck. So... This boomer, I will hand the millennials from, from this little fucking irritating, narcissistic, self-absorbed little pissant in his silk kimono lying there on his comfortable mattress with his Game Boy. Uh, and, and all you other fucking little spoiled brat millennials in your fucking silk kimonos with your fucking Game Boys. You're all a bunch of fucking pussies. Well, you're not all a bunch of pussies. Thank God I know Alistair. Alistair, you're bucking the trend, brother. Uh, but uh, outside of Alistair, you little fucks, you, you, you little fucks. You and your fucking Game Boys. You, you, you know, do, do, do you know how fucking clueless you are? You know, I, I, I've been here uh, on, on this property going on three fucking years now. And uh, uh, out, except for Alistair, hallelujah, brother, who has been one of the major uh, people, you know, doing a man's work around here, putting some fucking calluses uh, uh, on his goddamn fingers. Uh, uh, other than Alistair, three fucking years. Three fucking years. I have I have not seen anybody show up on this property. Uh, well, 
I will say with boomers, I'm going to put early uh, Gen Xers. I guess Rob realize, realize, realize is I, I, Rob. I guess you are a Gen Xer. I just, anyway, so taking let, let's just call it people uh, under the age of fifty. Now, okay. Recently, I have had the these Amish kids. This 15 and 17 year old Amish kids uh, come around to do some work around here, but it's hard, to, you know, these Amish kids, their fucking parents will not allow them to own a fucking Game Boy. You, you have to go to, 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 to the goddamn Amish to, to find uh, to find somebody under the age of 50 who's not a fucking little pussy who, who's so fucking terrified of showing up to work around here or anywhere else you know I was down in fucking Ecuador I remember being down in Ecuador in, in the year 2009 out in this uh, out in this what was the beautiful valley, Valle Hermosa, Valle Hermosa, outside of Banos, Ecuador, and I needed, I can't even remember what I was involved in, but I, I was, you know, uh, in the, I, I needed some physical labor to help me do whatever it was that, some crazy adventure I gotten in down in Ecuador in 2009 when I thought I wanted to live down there. And so, you know, I, I, I'm asking around town that, that I need a strong young buck to come, uh, you know, to come do a, a couple days of fucking work. Uh, and, and I remember the, the guys, they were, I mean, the guys showing up were my age. And, I, and, and I'm saying, you know, guys, I appreciate you coming up here, but we need, you know, we need some strong young men. And they all were fucking laughing at me. <clears throat> 2009. Uh, saying the, 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 these fucking young punks, they don't want to work. What are they, I remember they said they want to uh, drive taxis, is what they said. They all want to be, they all want to be taxi drivers. I remember this old man from Ecuador. I mean, you you couldn't find uh, anybody under the age of 50 to fucking go to work uh, in Ecuador in, in the year 2009. I remember earlier this summer, my my neighbor down the street, uh, somehow he was telling me about somebody he had found who would actually show up here and, and, and do some work. And I was absolutely flabbergasted and I'm thinking, and, and, and I don't know, I didn't really ask him about this guy, but somehow, you know, I described the job, some, some awful fucking job, moving all of this shit around up the hill and stuff. And uh, so I, I, I said, yeah, uh, I, I said, send him over. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm waiting for uh, I, I'm waiting for the uh, for, for this dude to come out. So the the truck drives up. Well, first it's my neighbor. Now now he is probably right at fifty years old. I'm guessing he's right at fifty, and I'm thinking that in the passenger seat is uh, is some young buck. The dude was fifty six years old and, and had a mild case of Parkinson's. Uh, was the guy showing up to, to do some fucking work around here? Uh, uh, other than uh, other than Alistair, Alistair's thirty six, uh, and these and these two Amish kids who have done all together about maybe eight to ten hours of work here. Uh, I have not been able to find. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't believe I forgot about Eddie White. Okay, Eddie White was twenty eight. All right, Eddie White. Uh, okay, in three years, I have had a 36-year-old and a 28-year-old show up for work. You know, to do some fucking work. You can't get, uh, you can't get anybody to, to show up to work around here. But uh, you, you know, you sure as fuck 
uh, ain't, ain't gonna get these little uh, privileged little fucking pussies like Reagan Parenton and, and, and all of his little silk kimono clad uh, little fucking uh, entitled friends to show up to do any fucking work. Every single person that I've had show up here ha has been uh, has been at least 50 years old. Like the guy doing all of this tractor work out here, the guy who's going to help me put in my road, he's 64 years old. He's a year older than me. He's a year older than me. He has a broken back too. Uh, you know, so he's done a lot of work uh, ar around here. Uh, let's see, an 82-year-old, uh, he's done quite a bit of work around here. Basil, my, my buddy Basil, uh, he's my age. I do appreciate all the work that Basil's done for me around here. Kevin Shanholzer. Kevin, how old are you? 55? Are you a, uh, are, are you an early Gen Xer? Now, uh, Kevin Shanholzer is, is a maniac. Uh, I wish to hell he lived a little bit closer, 55 years old. Um, you know, and my, oh yeah, my buddy Valentine. Now he dropped dead at 67. Uh, you know, earlier this summer, Valentine just dropped dead. Valentine uh, was over here helping me uh, with, you know, several things. Uh, a year before it is first dead, as far as I know, none of these people, I don't think Alistair, I don't think Alistair owns a Game Boy. Alistair does not own a smartphone. 36-year-old does not own a smartphone, does not own one. And, uh, and I'm quite sure uh, Alistair knows as much about, uh, it knows as much about uh, playing a fucking uh, Game Boy as I do. Alistair has never asked me in his entire life, what kind of mattress are you providing me uh, when I come to Bugs in a Jar Farm? And it never left his mouth. One person on the planet, well, I guess my Airbnb guest, you know, paying me $100 a fucking night to stay here. Maybe they're curious about it. Even they haven't asked what kind of fucking mattress. I have had one person in three years ask me what kind of fucking mattress uh, I, I was uh, providing them uh, for me having the honor to have one of these fucking little spoiled, privileged, pissant millennials. You're, you're all a bunch of a lazy, spineless little pussies. Yes, you win the fucking challenge. You win the Game Boy challenge. I give it to you. It's all yours. See what that fucking Game Boy is going to fucking do for you. Uh, you know, in this whole fucking, when I'm, when I'm up uh, taking a shit in my outhouse, you know, looking at this place, what uh, I and Alistair and Rob and, um, and other uh, folks have done, uh, I, I can imagine uh, if, uh, if Reagan Parenton uh, had bought uh, this place, what it looked like three years ago, not that he ever would have agreed to buy this place. It would look just like it did three years ago. Yes? You okay? Sancho has a collapsed trachea. I think he's getting stressed out. So anyway, I just wanted to, uh, I, I just had to make this video because I felt bad uh, of all that trash I was talking about, uh, Reagan, and I just want Reagan and anybody else to understand I wasn't just talking uh, about him. I'm talking about 98% of you pathetic, spineless little fucking pussies. You wouldn't last. 98% of millennials on this fucking planet would not last five minutes trading places with Hambo and Little Tail. Or 98% of the fucking boomers.
We got more balls than you got. We got more fucking spine than you little pussies have. So, Alistair, we're going to make you an honorary boomer. And uh, you should be embarrassed. I, I'm hoping that uh, Alistair is embarrassed to be part of that fucking generation. Thank God. I, I, you know, fucking millennials. Uh, they, they, these entitled little pricks and their fucking silk kimonos and their Game Boys. It's one more fucking reason that uh, my decision to get a vasectomy at age 22 was the single best decision uh, of my entire life. If I had ever spawned some fucking spineless, ballless little fucking pissant like Reagan Parenton or 98% uh, of his fucking little pissant pussy uh, generation, good God, I would be so fucking embarrassed now where the fuck I went wrong. My fucking mama would not have tolerated that fucking bullshit for one fucking second. Not one fucking second would, would my mother have put up uh, with, with that fucking snotty little attitude. Wouldn't have happened. Get the fuck out of here is what she would have said. Get the fuck out of my house. You're no son of mine. Anyway... So, I hope Reagan Parenton accepts my sincere apologies for uh, acting like that I would survive longer uh, lying in a comfortable bed in my room with a Game Boy than he would. So, Reagan, would you please go back to your room, lie down in your silk kimono on your comfortable mattress, Get out your Game Boy and stay there till fucking doomsday that you keep talking about. Anyway, I have to do uh, wrap this up because what I really came here to talk about tonight was murder police, murder bots. Have you heard about this latest or are these fucking cops have been given uh given a uh, pretty much license to kill uh, arming robots to kill us all and uh, so obviously uh, I'm going to have to do a rant about uh, now that I've done apologizing to that little pissant uh, I need to uh, get serious and we have to talk about uh, murder bots coming up in one minute. Bye guys. Would you go enjoy your comfortable bed? So, my little millennial dog. Yes, my little millennial dog. Is this your Reagan Parenton impression? Where is your Game Boy, Sancho? You've got the comfortable bed. Where is your Game Boy? Bye, guys.